Join me today as I take you through how I paint my 28mm US Rangers for D-Day. This fantastic miniature was kindly sent to me by the awesome team at Warlord Games, just in time for the 80th anniversary of the Normandy landings. Let me know below how you found this video and if you'll be grabbing yourself a set of the new US Rangers. Hello and welcome to my latest painting tutorial. So today we're going to be looking at some 28mm bolt action US Rangers. Now those unfamiliar with bolt action, it is a World War II war game produced by Warlord Games. The US Rangers sprue is a new sprue, or should I say an updated sprue from the previous US Rangers sprue that they did have out. So I believe from my research it's a bit more of just a mold update. I'm not sure if there's too much that's new in this sprue. I haven't seen the old US Rangers sprue, so if you do know the differences please let me know. Um, but I just believe the actual uh, moulds have just had a bit of a, a clean up and an odd day. But overall the sprue is really nice, it's got tons and tons of options with different weapons and equipment etc. So it's a really nice sprue and it was a real joy to paint up. Now if you do want to get yourself a set of these US Rangers, you can go to the Warlord Games website, under Bolt Action obviously you want to go to USA. Uh, and you can have a score around there. There's lots of different options for different vehicles and, and different um, departments of the army, uh, etc. So we want to go to the US Rangers. Now this kit here is the old US Rangers box set. Now, if you keep scrolling down, you'll be able to find that there is also available for pre-order the new US Rangers. So I'd highly recommend going with them. I believe you still get all the old options you did in the old box set. So it's really worth just grabbing the new molds, or the new sprues, I should say. Now, don't forget that I do have a special link for Warlord Games. It's just for the channel, and it will definitely help the channel grow, as well as my Patreon and channel members will get all of the paints listed in this video as a perk for them supporting the channel. So to start off with, with our US Ranger, I'm going to go with Tamiya Surface Primer Light Grey. Any sort of colour will do. I like the lighter colour purely because it helps my, my colours pop a bit more, I find. Then for the trousers, I'm going to use US Field Drab or Brown Violet. You can see here that I'm just using a smaller paintbrush. The reason I do that is purely because I want just a bit more control. You can obviously use a much bigger paintbrush for this because it's just literally putting our base coat down. And then for the jacket, I'm using khaki gray. Now I'm using khaki gray and you're probably going to be looking at it uh, as it is quite a bright color. So you might be looking at it going, whoa, that's a bit too bright, but we will darken it and the highlighting of it will, will just dull it down a touch and I'll show you how I achieve that in a little bit. And then for the webbing I use khaki. So the webbing and the jacket were almost identical in colour so it makes it really tricky for us as painters to try and make the two pop. So the reason I've used khaki grey for the jacket and khaki for the webbing is just purely because there is a slight difference between the two and you can see that uh, when you're painting it. I do apologize with the footage. Unfortunately, I had the shutter speed of the camera just slightly incorrect and not tuned properly. So there is a, a bit of difficulty with seeing the colors of their true color. They're a bit brighter and darker at times. And then for the helmet, I use US Dark Green. Now with the helmet and US Dark Green, I would use this color for like the torch, the his Bangalores, um, any other sort of equipment similar to that in terms of its colour. So grenades is another good one as well. Um, so yeah, that's what I'd be using for those bits of equipment. But he doesn't have them on this model that I painted. It is an option on the sprue though. And then for his boots, I use saddle brown. Saddle brown is a really good in-between sort of like a leathery brown and a brown. Um, so it's a really nice brown to go with, I find at least anyway for this. Now just be aware that the, the soles of the boots were black, so try not to paint them in this colour. I mean, it doesn't really matter, you can paint them black in a little bit anyway, but yeah, it's just less work for you to worry about. And then for the Thompson, I use black grey. So any sort of metal colour, I'm going to use black grey. So the Thompson in black grey, if we had a bayonet, 
I'd put that in black gray, perhaps a pistol um, in black gray, binoculars. Um, you sort of get the gist anyway. That's the sort of thing you want to go with. And then for the wood, my recipe remains the same always. I use flat earth for the wood and it goes the same with not just the parts of the Thompson, uh, his shovel and any other wooden bits of equipment he may have. He's got an axe or some sort of engineering equipment that needs to be painted wood um, or the M1 carbine around that kind of thing and then for the water bottle the actual lid of the canteen I go with base lead voucher it's silver you don't have to paint it in silver you could paint it in black gray but I think silver just makes it pop just that little bit more. and then we want to give it a wash so my recipe for washing remains the same always now it's not all in technical medium but one-to-one -one ratio. So it's a black wash thin down at about a half ratio. It then becomes a very diluted wash but it, it's sort of an in-between a glaze and a wash. So in the real recesses it will be dark but then on the outer parts where the recesses aren't as deep it's going to be quite light so it's not going to make your base colours super dark. We can go back over the base colours with our original colours. So the jacket was khaki grey and we're going to go back over it in khaki grey. Now, when you're applying your initial layering, so this is what I call my first layer, um, I'm practically painting the majority of it in the same color again, but I'm leaving that darker uh, base coat in the dark, in the, sorry, in the very deep recesses and anywhere there's sorts of crease and folds. And then once that's done, my highlight is going to be khaki gray and old wood at a one-to-one -one ratio doing the same sort of principle as the initial layer, but this is more of a highlight. So I'm really, really focusing on areas like the creases, uh, the sharp edges of the creases, where the elbow is um, and anything like that. Old wood will make this khaki gray just look a little bit more worn and take the brightness away from it, which is really gonna make it look a bit more authentic to, to the color that it was. Then for the trousers, we use US Olive Drab um, and we just follow the same principle again. So you can see here that I'm trying to just paint the majority of it back in, but making sure I leave some of that darker base color um, that's had its wash applied in those crease folds, but then just painting the rest of it as I would normally. So there is a finite to this um, and you will get it Trust me, it took me a while to wrap my head around it, but it just comes to you. Then I use US Field, sorry, US Olive Trap and Old Wood at a two to one ratio. You can use other colors, so like beige or um, German camo beige or Iraqi sand, depends how much you want it to make it pop. Uh, but I went with this and it's the same principles before. This is actually another layer before my, my final highlight. I find that giving this a couple of layers actually it's a lot more beneficial. I tried to reduce the amount of layers I was doing in this video just to make it a little bit more easier to follow along with in terms of the paints required and the time it takes. So as I said, now I'm doing my final highlight and this time it's at a one-to-one -one ratio using the exact same paints. Um, so it just makes life a little less painful if you take this step out. But because there's so little of the trousers to worry about, this step will honestly take you just a couple of minutes. Then for the webbing, we go back over it in khaki again. So just take your time because I find that the uniform, you can make mistakes on the uniform and your eyes are drawn to it. But I always find that webbing is the thing that lets me down with my models. So take your time with the webbing. Um, this is the most important thing for me. I think this is where people's eyes are drawn the most. So you're just scratching it in slow and steady, a little bit on your paintbrush and just scratch it in. And then khaki and stone gray at a one-to-one -one ratio. So we're gonna make that khaki pop. It's gonna give it a bit more of a, a whiter tone to it. Um, and then we just start picking out the areas that are lifted and where the folds are sharp. This is gonna be a great way of also giving the bag um, a look as if it's got equipment inside of it. That's how we do it with 
um, highlights. So you, the way you highlight it is going to show that there's a bulge in one bit and, and perhaps not in another. And then with the wood, I scratch in flat earth. So I'm literally just doing little lines of flat earth in here now, um, and just making sure that I'm controlling that nicely. I'm not putting a big blob of flat earth on there. You can get away with it with flat earth, to be completely honest, because this is just the same color as your base color. However, for my technique, I really like to try and simulate wood grains. So you can see I'm just scratching in, and this is even better here. I'm just literally doing vertical lines down and then horizontal lines across just to try and give those that grainy effect and then for my first layer i go with flat earth and orange brown at a one-to-one -one ratio so now it's brightening that flat earth up and i'm doing the exact same principle just probably not as much um, scratching this time so i'm just doing little lines where the wood is obviously so again, you can see I'm just sort of scratching. You could probably dry brush on if you really want to, but you're just obviously going to lose a bit of control if you do that. And then finally, I go with orange brown. And this time, I'm not putting nowhere near as much. And orange brown is very bright, obviously. Um, so this is just to add in a little bit, uh, give that, that wood its popping effect that we need to draw the eye when we're walking sure it looks good and obviously it might be a little bit unrealistic but I find this recipe works really nicely for wargaming miniatures. Then with metal I mean the principle remains the same just go with black grey and with the Thompson just painting the majority of it back in just leaving a really dark black sort of colour in the folds there. And then for the highlight, I use black grey and basalt grey at a one-to-one -one ratio. There's plenty of detail on this Thompson, so make sure you capture it. Um, it's definitely worth doing. You can already see that that Thompson's starting to pop just with this detail. I'm not going to give it silvers or anything. I just found that this is just going to work nicely. And then for the cap of the water bottle, we're using base lead belcher again. And then for the highlight of that, which you can completely forget if you don't want to do this, I use layer iron breaker from Warhammer. It's a very bright silver, so probably a bit unrealistic, um, but I think it looks pretty cool. Then for the helmet, I go back over with US dark green, but this time I'm dry brushing it. You gotta be really, um, controlled here if you've already painted the helmet straps because obviously you don't want to paint that green um, but you can see that just by dry brushing it and just painting with your paintbrush just the outer edges really is going to make that helmet pop and then we use US dark green and old wood at a one-to-one -one ratio to really get that to, to pop so just make it look bright on the top dark on the sides it's just going to make it look one. I think it's a really nice effect, actually. It really does look nice once it's uh, dry brushed on. You can see I'm just painting the outer edge, the rim of that helmet, if you will. And then going back over the boost with Salabran. This is my final highlight. I don't put any layers on. I'm literally just highlighting it with its base color just because they're probably gonna get dry brushed with different browns and stuff when I put the grass texture or the beach texture, whichever I decide on for this model. Now, if you wanna be game and paint insignia, you can go ahead and, cause I'm making this guy a captain, I'm just painting two little lines. I put the vertical bar on the back as well as his Ranger um, logo, but you don't have to do that. I'm sure there's decals out there for that as well. And then for the flesh, I use AK Interactive Light Flesh. Um, I just decided, I don't know why I've gone off the Vallejo Flesh range. I just find the AK Flesh range is just perfect for my needs. And then for the wash, I use Flesh Wash from Vallejo, which is obviously a red wash um, with a bit more of a, um, a lighter hue to it. And it works super well. I find this wash is really nice. Try and be controlled here I, if you're doing the same as me, as in painting the flesh last. I love to paint the skin's skin tone last. I don't know why, I just do. So be controlled, so use a nice brush and make sure you're just controlling the amount of wash that's going on and you're not spoiling the rest of your paintwork. Now for the eyes, I paint a 
horizontal line of white grain, just a very small little line if you're going to be painting guys. Um, I was against it for a little while, but it's up to you if you want to, if you want to do it. And once you've done it, you should have some sort of like possessed looking man. So then we want to go ahead and paint the rest of it. So we use black grey just to paint, give that eye some more texture and obviously paint the actual, um, the eye properly. Just a, literally just a little dot on each side. You can fix it up obviously by going back over it and white. Try to make them center if you want them to look right, obviously just manipulate it so it looks right. Once that's done, if you've made a few mistakes, I use base flesh from AK Interactive and that's actually gonna give underneath the eye just a little bit of a darker tone to the rest of the, the flesh, the color that you put on. It's gonna make his eyes look like a, got sleep uh, bags under his eyes. Um, so it's a really nice touch actually. And then we go over it again, same sort of principle as everything else with light flesh. So I paint the majority of his um, skin in this color, obviously leaving some of that darker flesh tone in underneath like his lip, underneath his nose, on the outer edges of his nose, um, his eyebrow for example. And then we can go over it with light flesh and highlight flesh at a two to one ratio. Now you can mix these two together as much as you want um, on your palette until you get a nice color and just keep doing the same sort of principle but reducing the amount that you're painting. Um, I will try and get a more in-depth video. I've got a 172 guide on this, which might be quite helpful, but for 28 mil, um, this camera work just wasn't good enough for it. So I'll try and get a much more detailed way of how I paint faces and flesh in the future, just so it's a bit more easy to follow along. And then finally, I go at a one-to-one -one ratio with the same paint. And you can see I'm just doing little bits, um, just underneath the eyes there, on the very tip of his nose, on the, on the tip of his chin, tip of his ears, that sort of, that sort of thing. And then you should have something that looks like this. So I'll, my fingers come out really nicely. I think the colors are absolutely perfect. Um, yeah, I'm really, really chuffed with this. And the, the miniature is really nice. So Warlord Games did a really great job there. And there you go. So there he is without the dodgy camera work as what you've seen before. So I do apologize again for the way that the camera footage came out. Um, but he's come out really nicely. I'm actually gonna rate him as probably one of my best 28 millimeter paint jobs. Um, I think he's just really nice and that's a lot of credit obviously to the sculpts. So don't forget, I've got that special link. If you do wanna use that, it really will help the channel. Um, as well as uh, obviously thanking my Patreons and Warlord Games for supporting the channel already. You guys are just absolutely awesome. If you wanna join the ranks of my Patreon and YouTube channel members, you can follow the links in the description. Um, like I said, at the start, you'll get a link to their paints, paint list it's for as little as $1 a month, um, as well as some other cool perks as well. But enough of that, I'm gonna leave it here. Let me know below what 28 millimeter miniature you would like to see next, and I will catch you at the next one. Thank you.